Hello and welcome to another edition of Serving the Valley. I'm Roy Justice. Today we're going to focus our attention on one of the area service clubs known as the Cedar Falls Rotary Club. And for a little bit of further disclosure, I'm a member. How I got into the Cedar Falls Rotary Club was by transfer. Had they done that by vote, I might not have made it. <laughs> My guests today include Vicki Sector, who is a member, uh, what, about a year and a half? Yes. Okay. Uh, Vicki, in real life, however, uh, wears a scout uniform. Uh, she is a member of the District Executive Committee for the Winnebago Council. Did I get that title right? Pretty close. Pretty close. Okay. <laughs> Vicki is how we'll be referring okay. to Vicki. And next to uh, her is a gentleman who shows up a lot around the area, uh, if not by voice, by picture, because I've seen him several times on Channel 15's productions. Jim Koloff is here. Jim, welcome. Thank you, Roy. Uh, Jim wears several hats uh, in real life. His occupation is that in media. He owns and uh, manages several radio stations here in the Valley, as well as beyond. And Jim is what is called the District Governor, the District Governor of District 5970, which geographically is about the, what, northern half of the state? About the northern third of Iowa. Northern third yeah. of Iowa, okay. A member of Rotary for a few years. A few, 25. 25 year yeah. membership, okay. Uh, Jim and Vicki are here to tell us a little bit about Rotary. I want to build first the big picture, and it really is a big picture, Jim. It is a big picture. In fact, Rotary is the largest service organization in the world. And of course, we as members of the Cedar Falls Rotary Club or the other two clubs here in the Cedar Valley are members of a much larger organization, uh, 1.2 million Rotarians in 33,000 clubs located in over 208 countries. So wow. we really are worldwide in our structure. As district governor, you oversee the district comprising how many clubs? Uh, there are 53 clubs in our district and uh, about 2,500 Rotarians uh, make up that, that district. Everywhere from uh, Dubuque down to Cedar Rapids over to Fort Dodge um, to Pocahontas up into Spencer and Emmitsburg, Esterville, Mason City, the, that northern third of Iowa. Okay. Um, there is a tie between the state of Iowa and Rotary on the international scene. If it hadn't been for a University of Iowa graduate, there may not be a Rotary. There may not be a Rotary. Uh, Paul Harris, our founder, was a graduate of the U of I uh, Law School. And the story goes that uh, he took his first job in Chicago, moved to Chicago from Iowa City, didn't know anyone, and knew he needed to meet people to uh, further his career, but also his social status in town. And so he started meeting with about four or five other uh, gentlemen at that time, and uh, they, they met in different offices. So they'd meet in his office one day, they'd meet in the other gentleman's the next week, and so they would rotate between offices, and rotate. the name became Rotary as they rotated between the offices as they met with five individuals back then. Excellent. Vicki, I'm going to pin you down right away and ask you, of all the wonderful organizations, including the Boy Scouts, why Rotary? Well, one thing I like about Rotary is it is international, but it's also local. So by uh, belonging to the Rotary, I am also involved with the community, plus at a larger scope with the international part. Service above self, more than just a couple of words. Jim, what's it mean? You know, what it means to me is uh, putting others first. Uh, I've been blessed in my life, and through Rotary, I'm able to give back um, my time and my talents and my treasure to others here in the Cedar Valley, but also around the world. So really, uh, putting others first is what, is what Rotary service above self means to me. Vicki, bring the, in Rotary, there's something we say at every meeting, and it's called the four-way test. Now, I'm not going to ask you to recite <laughs> the four-way <laughs> test, That's good. but what does it mean? Um, basically, it, it's the way I live my life. Um, I look at what the four-way test, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? So any kind of questions I have, I look at that and what, what's, that gives me my answer right there. That almost sounds like a business plan. You know, it really is. Uh, uh, many business people who are Rotarians use that, as Vicki said, to uh, help them in their decisions in life, but also at the office mm -hmm. and how they treat their employees, how they treat their customers. And it really is, if you follow that plan, you're going yeah. to do great things in life. Let's bring it local, if you will. 
you cover the district, all those clubs in the district. District governor, by the way, is a one-year term. Mm. Yes. If everything yes. works well, it's a yes, one-year term. Yes, that's right. <laughs> if, if the next guy doesn't leave first before it's his turn. There you go. But you visit each of the clubs mm. in the district and find out what they're doing and help promote Rotary from the, not only the, on the large scale, but also their local projects. Can you give me a couple of examples and uh, maybe cite the communities that are involved in that? Yeah, it, it's, it, that's been the best part of being district governor is going out and hearing of all the great things that all these clubs are doing around uh, the state of Iowa. You know, here in Cedar Falls, we've got the Cedar Valley Club um, that meets a Wednesday nights. Every month they do a, a project from serving meals to those who can't get out to cleaning parks. Um, we're working together, the two clubs in Cedar Falls, to beautify and refurbish a, a city park, building a new shelter there, uh, and we're using a, a grant from the district uh, that, that's helping pay for that. Um, we look at Cedar Rapids, a big club, 300 plus members. Uh, they're building wells in Haiti. Uh, they've, they've given over $10,000 to help build wells in Haiti. You go up to uh, Algona, and they built a park. Uh, re rejuvenated a park in, in that area. Emmitsburg, small town of Emmitsburg, Iowa, is helping build uh, water wells in uh, Honduras uh, on an international level. Uh, Spencer, a club of Spencer, you know, for fun, they, they put up uh, bike racks in their community to help out the park and rec department. So it's, it's a mix of, of local projects, international projects, but they're happening in every town where Rotary is located. So Vicki, you can't necessarily go to Haiti and you can't necessarily get involved in some of the worldwide projects. But on the other hand, you kind of can with the checks that you write uh, regarding the foundation mm -hmm. or even your membership dues. Um, are there favorite places that you can target your dollars as far as Rotary is concerned locally? You know, locally, I absolutely enjoy the bike trails and riding through and seeing the Rotary Prairie that we have is wonderful and I see other people out there enjoying it so when I'm going by and I see families going through the paths and stuff you know that just shows me that we're making a difference. Actually I was out to the prairie just to kind of keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly blooming right now yeah. but it, it, it will be soon and yeah. we'll have uh, some visual uh, for you to take a look at when we come back and we will be coming back with more about Rotary right after this. close to making history, this close to changing the world. We are this close, this close to making sure no child suffers from this devastating disease ever again. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. Cedar Falls Rotary, the topic of discussion on serving the valley this time around. Vicki Sector and Jim Koloff, uh, kind enough to spend some of their day with us today. Um, we have a little more time to go, but let's go visit the prairie. Can we do that? Give me a little story on how that prairie got started, Jim. Well, I don't know every detail, but I do know the guy that made it happen. And a uh, longtime Rotarian and a uh, longtime community volunteer, former state legislator from Cedar Falls, Marv Deemer. Uh, really took that prairie and made that what it is today, a 13-acre uh, restoration project. And it's around Big Woods Lake in Cedar Falls on the north side. And really what the Rotary Club did along with the city and uh, also help from UNI's prairie project, they took an area out there that was just 
trees and scrubs and, and bushes and made it into a real live, living, uh, breathing prairie with beautiful flowers and uh, signs of the different uh, plants that are out there. And it really is a showpiece now for our trail system, as Vicki mentioned earlier, uh, where families and individuals on walks and, and on their bikes. And it was all because of Marv Deemer's vision all those many years ago. Excellent. And what a, what a beautiful spot to uh, go be at peace in this troubled world of ours. <laughs> it, it, it is. <laughs> it's it a is. good place to go and relax. And the Rotary Club of Cedar Falls uh, donated uh, a lot of the money for that project along with the city. It was a partnership. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, uh, I've been out there and, and had my kids out there sweating as we're pulling weeds. And <laughs> um, Steve Bokey, a Rotarian now, has mm -hmm. kind of taken over. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mar passed away, left us a couple of years ago. So Steve's kind of the, the caretaker now for the club. And, and he organizes those opportunities oh. for us to go out there and get dirty and, and uh, clean up that prairie. My uh, first adventure, if you will, uh, in volunteerism for the Cedar Falls Rotary was going out and breathing in some of the smoke at the Prairie Burnoff last year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have to do that every once in a while. They do, they do, and you know, it, it sounds counterproductive, but it really, uh, that's what nature does and to, mm -hmm. to get rid of some of the bad stuff that's out there and, mm -hmm. and rejuvenates that thing. Every, I don't know how many years they do that, every five, six years, I think. Talk a little bit about the foundation, because uh, it takes money. It does take money. You know, our Rotary Foundation is celebrating its 100th birthday this year. Uh, and over those 100 years, the, the Rotary Foundation has given $3.7 billion, that's with a B, billion dollars to different projects around the world. And you saw a video during the break that uh, mentioned some of those things mm -hmm. with education, um, children's health, uh, women's health, uh, water is a huge thing. You think about these countries that they, they walk three, four miles for their clean water every day each way and we, we turn a spigot is what we do and they don't do that and so uh, Rotary has made it their their mission to bring clean water to the world through the foundation so Rotarians give of their treasure they make donations uh, to the Rotary Foundation to help support that and then that money is given out to projects Rotary clubs originate those projects um, and work with other Rotary clubs around the world to bring those projects <coughs> to to those in need so it's, it's really neat. It's, it's the 100th birthday, and we've got a big celebration in Atlanta uh, uh, this summer for the Rotary Foundation. Excellent. If we hadn't mentioned it before, let's mention it now. Where does the Cedar Falls Rotary Club meet and when? Cedar Falls Rotary Club meets Tuesdays at the Women's Club uh, over the noon hour. And uh, traditionally, we have lunch, and we have a speaker come in. So we've always got uh, some interesting program. Uh, the Women's Club is a beautiful facility, got mm -hmm. a nice stage, and uh, uh, really is a, a beautiful place to meet. So uh, it's been meeting there, the Rotary Club, for about 30 years. You attend the meeting, and what does the meeting contain? What's it involve? Well, um, we have lunch, as you mentioned. Um, sorry, I have a cough. <laughs> <coughs> Vicki has a call. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, basically, we have lunch, um, get to talk to everybody at the mm -hmm. tables, get to, you know, see how everybody's doing and everything. Um, and then we do a, what do you want, a few announcements, kind yeah. of wheel spinner. The wheel spinner. He has some fun, pokes fun at people and collects those dollar fines, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of fun, giving us trivia that we mm -hmm. pretty much 99% cannot answer. True. So we have to pay a fine. So it's a money maker. Uh, so yeah. it's a money maker, yeah. uh, but it is fun. And then we have a um, guest speaker, um, all different types, um, people from the community, other organizations. So it is very informative. Um, you definitely know what's going on in the community by the speakers and stuff. So. There's a project that Rotary has been working on, and I've been in Rotary about 35 years. It's still not done yet, Jim, but as somebody said not too long ago, it's about this close. That's right. That's right. Polio. Yeah, polio has been um, a, a problem in this world for, for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And back in the 80s, Rotary, a Rotarian from the United States said, we've suffered from polio enough and the kids around the world in the United States have suffered enough. And uh, uh, Rotary made a pledge to end polio and eradicate it from the face of the earth. Now, at that time, they thought it might take five or 10 years. They didn't know what they were up against when we're talking a worldwide disease. Mm -hmm. But for, for all these 30 plus years, Rotary has continued to fight polio and our campaign in polio now continues. But the, the, where we've gone, Roy, is we've gone from um, about 400,000 cases of polio every year to last year, 
as Vicki mentioned today, 37 cases last year in the world, mm -hmm. confined to three countries. Polio used to be in every country on the planet, right. now three countries, and we're hoping that gets to, to zero. We're that close. Um, so we need to keep going. Rotarians give of their uh, money. They donate to uh, polio all around the world. We raise millions of dollars. It's $800 million a year that we spend fi fighting polio as a, as a Rotary project. We've got the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation mm -hmm. that matches every dollar that a Rotarian gives two to one. So we can't thank the Gates enough. Uh, for every dollar I give, they give two. And that helps in our quest to end polio. We'll do it, uh, not as quick as we thought, but uh, Rotary will end polio uh, in this world. Another aspect of what Rotary does, and we see it, uh, Vicki, at some of our meetings as well, is that's when student guests are invited or we get to hear from an international student who is studying in this country. Mm -hmm. And that's all thanks to some scholarship money that's made available uh, through uh, Rotary International. There's also local contributions that are made to that for that purpose. And uh, how often do we have an international student in a community like Cedar Falls? About every year. Uh, we've got uh, a student this year. We'll have uh, a student next year. And uh, in our district, there are 12 youth exchange students this year, and there'll be 12 next year. Rotary International is a very robust youth exchange program where there are hundreds, if not thousands, of students traveling back and forth, a lot of it paid by Rotary um, on an international level and on the local level. So our club, every host club, spends about $2,400 of their fundraising money to host that student, to pay for their school fees and give them a stipend to live here. And it really is a neat opportunity, not, for the, not only for the host student, uh, but for the community. To have that student from, uh, whether they're here from Spain or Portugal or Brazil, uh, Argentina, they bring their culture to the high school here in Cedar Falls or Waterloo and uh, really give us a taste of what it's like to be a student back, back there. So uh, the, the youth program that we have and the exchange program is, is really something special and it gives our opportunity for our student here to go to another country. So we'll have two Cedar Falls students next year, uh, one in Belgium and one in France next year. Vicki, I'm going to ask you a question but I'm not expecting you to know the answer to it. And then we're going to turn to Jim because there's something new in Rotary's life thanks to uh, a cooperative effort between the two uh, uh, districts of, of Rotary in Iowa. Have you ever heard of Dr. Ponsetti? No. Okay. That was the correct answer. Okay. <laughs> so then I say to Jim, have you ever heard of the disease called clubfoot? Well, I'm glad I can answer this question. Otherwise, I'd fail, right, Roy? <laughs> Correct, <laughs> which leads you right into... I did not know anything about clubfoot uh, before about a year and a half ago. But uh, Dr. Ponsetti, who you probably knew... I did. ...personally, being in Iowa City for all those years, uh, revolutionized a, a, a technique to treat clubfoot. And clubfoot is when the child's feet are born inward. You know, they're usually born this way, they're mm -hmm. born inward. Uh, most children were treated with surgeries. Correct which are very bad and, and do not last their lifetime. They usually end up not being able to walk at some point in their life. Uh, Dr. Ponsetti, who is from Italy, I believe, yes. uh, developed this method of, of massaging those feet slowly and putting them in casts so they would slowly turn them right Correct. over a, a course of several years. Five different casts. Wow, yes. and Roy knows more about this than I do. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's testing us. I, had the <laughs> I actually had the privilege of meeting Dr. Ponsetti at a uh, at a social event in Iowa City many years ago, mm -hmm. and he was explaining to me um, uh, how that all how that all came about. And the two districts are now combining in their efforts. We are. Ponsetti. You know, Ponsetti's uh, methods continue on. Jose McQuerdo is the new surgeon that that uh, now is in charge of the Ponsetti Clinic, and we've got what's called a, a rag for club foot. Now, a rag is a funny way of uh, acronym for a Rotary Action Group, <laughs> right. and uh, so that group is now raising money to send doctors out uh, in the world to train them on how to do the Ponsetti method, free of charge. We don't charge these doctors to learn this method, so our doctors right here in Iowa and at Iowa City uh, share their knowledge with doctors around the world, but they need to travel, they need to have housing, uh, they have expenses, and that's where Rotary is coming in. We're raising money to, uh, to pay for that and, and continue that throughout the world. I looked at the clock, and unfortunately, the clock usually wins. So we're going to uh, say thank you to uh, Jim and Vicki for joining us in another edition of Serving the Valley. You know, there are thousands of stories here in the Cedar Valley, just like the one you've just heard. 
And Vicki and Jim, thank you for joining us and telling us the story of Rotary in Cedar Falls and internationally. Until that next story unfolds, thanks for joining us on Serving the Valley. I'm Roy Justice. We've forgotten how afraid we were. In 1952, the threat was real. Parents were advised to keep children away from crowds. Pools closed and movie theaters went dark. Hysteria grew. People were quarantined. It was the worst polio outbreak the United States had ever seen. history, it's still circulating. As recently as 1988, the World Health Organization estimates that the world saw more than 350,000 new polio cases that year alone. That's nearly 1,000 new cases per day. But through the largest global health initiative in history, we've gone from 350,000 cases annually to just 74 in all of 2015. That's a staggering 99.9% .9 reduction. But we can't quit now. If we don't stop circulation of the virus, we risk reinfection and outbreaks. That's why getting to zero matters. We're not saying it'll be easy. Vaccination in these countries is complex and expensive. In our ultra-connected world, the disease is never more than a plane ride away. Within 10 years, failure to eradicate polio from these last remaining strongholds could result in as many as 200,000 new cases every year. We've immunized 2.5 billion children in the world's largest, most sophisticated global health initiative. Our commitment to eradication matters now more than ever. We are on the cusp of making history.